Outside. 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 Do you want to say outside? Yeah. Can you say outside? No. Outside. What would you say if you were on television? Today I was in the, in the big cathedral. Which one? Mm, the to? Anglican. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah. a, that's a lovely cathedral. Never let's big. Don't say one we've got to. The Catholic cathedral. I don't like. The way well. It's got no. It's got no atmosphere. How do you call it? There's a name for Paddy's it. Paddy's wigwam. Paddy's wigwam. Paddy's wigwam. Why, why is it? Because it looks like a wigwam. Yeah. And it was mostly Irish builders. You know, yeah. yeah. And the Irish are called the Paddies. That's why. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> 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 the nasty funnel. I don't mind. I have got all the nasty funnel. What is that? It's an upside down funnel. Yeah. Funnel is. Yeah. Um, you know, funnel. What you pour yeah. liquids into, so yeah. you want it to fill a bottle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's known as oh. the nasty funnel. Give me strength. Is there any milk for the tea? I will. Did you bring milk for the tea? No, that it's okay, there will be milk. I'm all right, I don't have milk, so. Really? Just black coffee for anyone who's got a hangover. <laughs> that's which? <weak. laughs> no, that's what you need. All right. It's a bit late for a hangover. Hmm? Does it's anyone a bit late want? For a I have one more tea left. Oh, if you want to share a tea? Do you want to share a tea? Uh, we could share a tea, can we? Is it no milk? This is coming. Is it? Come. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of the, the people from the Parks that you might have. Spots in these, these are spectacular, don't they? Butterfly cakes with mm. chocolate. They're a poor imitation of a fancy butterfly cake, I'm but you never know, do you? How many times a week? Uh, I don't Go on. I, 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 I'm, I'll try those Live two. Live dangerously, because. Hazel. Yeah. Live dangerously. It's not dangerous eating your fish. Live dangerously. <laughs> I shall have one of my own too, mm. just in case. You know, yep. it must be seen to eat your own wares, right? <laughs> yeah. It's terrible, you know, when you don't eat. I must do, you, have one. do you know if you kind of, um, how do you say, salute or for Cheers. a drink? Cheers. Cheers for a drink. Cheers, yeah. Then you have to look into the eye. I can do pay. you know why that is? Yeah. Yeah. There's a tradition. And there used to be in the Middle Ages, there's among kings, because they were always afraid if they would be poisoned by another. So what they did, they, they uh, hit it very hard so the, the beer would spill from one another to, mm. to so and they would look in the eye so that means I trust you that there's, if there's beer here that I can drink it, that it's everything is fine. Yeah, that it's not poison. It was kind of sign of trust to look into the it's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it risks to me. Well, say the eyes are the window of the soul. Shady eyes? No, they say the, the eyes are the window oh, of the yeah. soul. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Mm. I, I, want the, I want the paper case later. I'm going to recycle them. I've put, I put a picture on the wall. <laughs> you saw it? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, where's yes. the milk, is it? Yeah. Yeah. There's, There's the milk, yeah. yeah. There's one, I think, cappuccino. Do you have a drink? No, I don't. Is that a cappuccino? No, cappuccino because you didn't tell me where you want it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, sorry. No, it's She used that initiative. Mm -hmm. Yes. Anna, you want to no. remember this? Uh, oh, Don't eat too much and ask questions. Would you like uh, <laughs> one of the cakes? I love the cake. Yeah. Take. All right. Can I give you one of those? Thank you. Anna made them. <coughs> As the lady said, <laughs> stop eating. Ask questions. Time is of the essence. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> Burning daylight. I, th I thought you would be the shy one. Burning daylight, my friend. <laughs> All right. As they say. No, so I, I put the picture on the wall of your street to. Um, well, the first thing. The street, that's at the table. Well, yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 Hazel, do you have any questions you want to ask? <laughs> <laughs> no. Who made you put that table there? Can I ask first, well, first one of the things of the what I was surprised by, um, Eleanor, and which I found a very good point you were making. There's a, a lot of uh, media attention for for your uh, neighbourhoods and for what the kind of protests you you're trying to do. But you said um, um, that a lot of people <coughs> um, come and take um, that that kind of um, uh, what you have to say, but it's a har you hardly get anything in return. Do you also have that feeling that there's a lot of media attention, but it doesn't give you anything in return? Yeah, it's just a blip. It's, it seems to me sometimes that it's just something for people 
to have a little chat about but it's it's you know it it, it doesn't go any further than that mm-hmm. or you know so or it, it, people, or people it's it's like um the 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 leader one who got the contract for the refurbishments of of the streets they they wanted to meet with us they wanted our ideas because they wanted to get that into their bid but mm-hmm. we never saw the finished bid yeah so we weren't allowed to see what they put in neither did we see what Liverpool City Council put out in order to attract the bids? But everything we've seen before that was just so negative about the area that it was, un- you know, it was un- <laughs> it, 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 the fact that anybody bid is a surprise because they sound make us sound like scoundrels and yeah. the area like it's, you know, we're living on a mire. But do you have sometimes have a feeling that it's all over that? The asking of people to share their ideas about, for example, a neighborhood or a new building, and it's a kind of a scapegoat just to do what they want, really, or...? I don't think they've ever really uh, listened to people's ideas when they didn't match what they wanted to do anyway. So Mm. all the uh, consultations that have taken place in our area have just been... uh, For sure. Yeah, they've just been for show, and because actually for years, you know, maybe 15 years at least, maybe 20 years, 20 the council years, wanted yeah. to demolish our area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, any consultation that they did, we didn't want that, so that didn't match what they wanted. Yeah. Um, you know, that's the downside of consultation. Yes. <laughs> well, it, 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 the thing is, it was, it was never consultation. What they wanted was for us to agree with what they wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So initially they told us that they had the grand plan for that area and it included demolition. Well, it was demolition and that we would be moved out to nicer areas. Um, but they never did consult because even when they, they had a Granby consultation day, I think that was March 2010, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, well, March 2010. 10, yeah. So that's two years ago. Yeah. Um, but there was, and that was about the new build that started that Gleason's uh, are doing on, on some of the empty yeah. sites and what Lovell's are doing and so on and so forth. But it was never a consultation. What it was was different developers there showing us what their plans were and a big hoo ha when we didn't agree and when we said, well, it's not, co- this isn't consultation. Yeah. Yeah. But we've never actually been consulted. It's like when people do surveys and they have pre prepared questionnaires. You know, the st- you you can't turn real answers into statistics mm-hmm. and say fifty eight percent of the people say say this because real answers don't move into statistics. So people will never be listened to while people are looking at while councillors and those in power are looking for numbers to crunch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they crunch yeah. the people in order to get the numbers because the answers that we're giving aren't right. They don't yeah. they don't like them. Yeah. And so, and at that point, they kind of disappear out of your life, and then just do what they have to do. Yes, I think yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Would you? What would be for you um, your street the ideal uh, mm. solution, or the ideal street for you now with current street? What would be? How would you like to see it evolve? Well. Uh, our street, particularly, <coughs> I uh, <coughs> presume Rosa would agree with me. Um, we would like to see it as it was before, with um, young couples, children, that used to be full of children. Uh, it seems to be just now made up of one side, and we all seem to be all getting on in years, like, you know, there's just uh, a few young children in the area. But before that, it used to be a very vibrant street, mm-hmm. full of kids, kicking footballs here, there, and everywhere. Um, going out complaining, watch the windows and things like that, you know. So that seems to be, it's such a quiet street now. So with these new houses, with the houses being refurbished in our street now, it's going to be a little bit of a shock to us because it's been so quiet over the years. And when the houses start filling up, you know, it's, as I say, it'll be a shock to us because we're so used to the quietness of the street yeah. since all the kids and most of the uh, community, the people in the street, when we moved in, that were in there, in the street when we moved in, they've all gone, plus the children, we don't have so many kids in the street. Mm. Well, and it will be a bit idea. of a shock to us, actually, you know, for the yeah. peace and quiet will be sh- shattered. 
<laughs> again. <laughs> would be a good idea, though, to ask the people that used to live there if they want to come back to the area, because they were more or less forced out. And I know a good few people who would want to come back. I mean, but the council, I can't see them doing that because they're forever saying people don't want to come back to that area. When they were knocking down the two big houses on Kingsley Road, they were saying, oh no, eh, nobody wants to buy them, but they hadn't put them on the market. And we said to them, put them on the market and see if there's any offers, mm. but they wouldn't put them on the market. Yeah. But that's crucial, isn't it? Mm. Because one of the things we did like for our, our area is to have cheap, affordable housing. Yeah. And what has not been possible is for anybody to access those houses. Mm. There's been a housing co-op was formed that wanted to carry, you know, to buy up 10, 12 houses in a terrace and do them up yeah. in an environmentally friendly way. That would have been a cooperatively owned section of that mm. terrace. That would have been a great idea. We formed a community land trust, hoping to be able to access some housing. Uh, none of those have been possible because the council won't release the houses. Mm. And they still haven't done really, because what they've done is they've, they've handed a block, the whole for four streets, over to a developer. They put that block out for tender but as a block, you know, so mm. it was you have the houses and you, if you've got the money to renovate them, never, so that was never possible for people to buy into it. Yep. And in fact, those houses aren't going to be for sale anyway. So there's no cooperative ownership. There's going to be very little social rent and social rent is a bit of a farce anyway. Um, so it was m more like a guilty neglect. They, they, that was the way for them to demolish the neighbourhood, neglect um, the possibility for people just to take it in their own hands. Oh, they, they, they never wanted us. No, they, there's, a, there's always, like, there's all, always a lot said about democracy, mm. but we're only allowed to have democracy as long as we don't have any power. <laughs> right, as long as what we say, you know, counts for nothing. Mm or as long as we agree with the people that only a third of the adults who could vote went out to vote, you know, a third of a third of the population voted in the current government, so they don't have a very big mandate. And basically the thing to do is to keep everybody quiet, mm -hmm. but certainly not to give us power, because they talk about people, you know, local politics and local people doing things for themselves. Well, you can't do something with nothing. So not only did the council take away our dignity, um, take away neighbours, um, leave us living in dereliction and dirt, Sorry. Um, but they now also take away any opportunity that people have to do things for themselves. Mm. And it's like, you know, first of all, we were just a thorn in their side because we wouldn't move. And now, you know, we should really be ground into the dirt. But the other thing, you see, that we're left in the position that we're glad they're not being knocked down. Yes. You just have Absolutely. to accept such a small, you know, just to be glad about small things. Because mm. actually we're not, our houses aren't going to be knocked down. We're not going to be compulsory purchased. People will move into the area. Yep. It's just not what it could have been. And in terms of who owns that piece of really good real estate, it's not going to be people, it's going to be a developer really mm -hmm. um, and that's, we have to make the best of that yeah. but it is better than us all being shunted out isn't it, which is what we were looking at for years really Yeah, yeah but for years we've been showing them plans <laughs> uh, Granby Residence Association got um, John Moore's University to draw up plans of what could be done. They wouldn't even look at them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we really didn't have any choice, no choice at all. We had an architect to show what could be done, but he still wasn't listened to. So, you know, in their minds, they already had plans, and that was to try and get us out. And since mm -hmm. we were such stiff in the muds, and pinching them every now and again, you know. <laughs> it made them think twice because they knew that there were so many people that were agreeing with what we were wanting mm. to save that last little triangle of Granby Street. I mean, they took away the heart of Granby Street. 
that was a fantastic community at one time and they forced people out and left the houses to rot and then they turn around and say well it's our fault because you know we didn't take care of the area how can we take care of the area when it belongs to the housing associations and now these new ones that are getting done up they're like little dolls houses anyway but now that they're getting done up they're going to go some of them are going to go back to the housing associations that caused the problems in the first place so um, where's the fairness let the ordinary people buy a house and do it up themselves sell it at a reasonable rate people would have snapped their hands off years ago to do those houses up before they got into the state that they were in but they just wouldn't let them go but that's down to the lack of imagination of the council and who would know what would happen in 20, 23 years anyway, even if all the houses have been lived in? We don't actually know. But what we do know is that purposefully th those houses were left to rot and that the people who live there were not given any say-so over what happened. And it was never about individual people having things. It was about the ownership of a lot of properties by people with power and money. You know, so there's been nothing from a Labour council or a Liberal council to say, let's share wealth, let's listen to what people have got to do. They didn't see the fact that the area would be taken about part piecemeal and could be put back together. And those houses would still be on the list for demolition, I believe, if the housing market renewal grants hadn't been stopped. Mm. I think if those grants were still available, because the, the amount of money that Liverpool's wasted in their so-called consultation, which by the way, despite the fact that they, they consulted us or said they consulted us over and over again, we were never paid whacking great consult, consultant fees. We were supposed to be happy that they would even <laughs> present um, something that they were going to do to us in a school for half a day where we could say we liked it, which we didn't. You know, but they call that consultancy. Well, I know people who get paid an awful lot of money for consultancy. We were never offered a penny. We were never offered, you know, when we've said we wanted to look into the mm -hmm. houses, when we've said we want to put ideas through. The only time our ideas have ever been used is when they can make money for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, and that makes me angry. But I wouldn't know what would happen in 20 years within Granby anyway, because we were never given the chance to know what would happen naturally. But I do know that, you know, Rosa and, and Anna and everybody's right when they say that the houses, they should have been... Because research was done, and it was, there was a project done in Benwell where houses were sold for a pound, and then people were given grants to help bring them up to standard. Now, we asked for this 15 years ago, and for 60 houses, I think we got 350 people who wanted to do that. So we, over and over again, we proved things were viable. But, of course, it didn't give the right money to the right people. You know, that's it. It gave the money to us <laughs> or to the people who wanted those houses. It gave power to the people. But you can't actually have that. You can only talk about it. Yeah. yeah. But also I noticed that since we started greening the area and painting the houses and things like that, we were getting noticed and they didn't like that. We were in the newspapers and everything. Because until we, until we started to show that there was still a community there, they, was, they were going to leave us to rot. I really believe they would have left us to rot. Yeah, I do. But well. because yeah. we started standing up and being noticed, they had to say, oh, yeah, we, are, we know what's going on there. We're helping them. They didn't help one bit. In fact, lovers. Did Sheila tell them Ellen this? Yeah. She loves it. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know the way we've greened all the area and we painted all the houses and everything. So when Lovells came Can along... Yeah, actually, if you don't, like there's a picture also <laughs> behind you. This is one of the no, houses. That's, but that's not... Do you want what, to see the picture? Any more? We painted, we painted front doors and painted letter boxes <laughs> to confuse the postman. <laughs> we put curtains on the painted curtains on the windows, <laughs> and there's cats looking out the middle window. That's where the stray cats lived, yeah. and we, we had a castle on the first house of the street. <laughs> but when we started doing that, people were noticing us, and when Lovells decided, well, we're going to redevelop, they said. After a few months, oh, we'd like to give a donation towards <laughs> <laughs> credit towards your plants and that. Uh, and we thought, oh, we're going to get a bit here, you know, <laughs> fifty pounds to give us. Oh, that's now we're like kin 
caretakers around that area. We've made that mm. place habitable, ha- habitable to live. Mm. So people, you know, do want to come. A woman come from France to see what we were doing. She said she'd seen it on the internet, but she wanted to see for herself. Mm-hmm. And she was praising us and everything. So that made the area more likely that people would come and buy into yeah. that area. So then, as I said, it started from us starting to tidy the place up for them to decide, yeah, well, we'll start doing something because people will want to live there. They can see that these people are trying to mm-hmm. keep it going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But also, Rosie, you know, when you say we started to tidy the place up, it meant that we had to shovel out like oh, 10 yeah, years yeah. worth of dumping from mm. every single empty house in our street. It, what, you mm. know, it wasn't just, ooh, I'll just tidy oh, that no, front. No, no. We had to <laughs> scrape down every <coughs> single bay window before we mm. could pay it because it just had the mm. slime of centuries. It so it was a massive job to, to green up mm. our streets, mm. really. But I think out of what we managed to do was we managed to, despite everything, we made it a great place to live. Because yeah. actually it is a great place to live. So, which was amazing, really, considering how awful it was. And from that, we've yeah. started a community market the last day of the month. There's we, one next the week, right? Yeah. The month, we yeah. have a, a market where people just come along and sell whatever they want. Um, we were getting told off we, could, we couldn't do it because, I mean, we're in a, a blocked off street, it's a one way street that's mm-hmm. blocked off, no traffic can go through. So they were telling us, no, you haven't got a license. <laughs> well, luckily, we, we've got a license now, so we're walking around with our fingers up now, aren't we? Saying, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then um, we've asked for gazebos from the council, but they didn't want to help us. So, you know, we're trying to wangle our way around it all the time. Have they given you a reason for not wanting to help? They always want no to money. help. It's just there's no always money. barriers in the way. But personally, I honestly think you get sidetracked and bogged down once you start worrying about what the council's going to do and not yeah. do to support you. You just do it, it's, yeah. you know, and not... Otherwise, we'd never have done anything if we'd asked the council or waited for the council or... It would nev- nothing would have happened. So bugger the gazebos, I think, you know, because we've run the market for three years and it's, you know, it's gone from strength what, to what's strength. What's gazebos? Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, the, the, the other thing is, I mean, that the cost of council help, as we know, with the Granby Residents Association. The Granby Residents Association ran very well and did a lot and then we applied for grants from the council and then we, get, we became totally bogged down in bureaucracy. And, event, and then it, it was just ludicrous because most of what the Granby Residents Association then did was in order to meet the remit of getting the grant. So they were no longer answerable to the residents of Granby. <laughs> they were then answerable to the council because the council had given them a grant, which just made it a farce. You know, and it seems to me that if you get help from the council, what it does is make your life very, very difficult indeed, Mm -hmm. because you have to meet standards that are unreasonable. And then they say, well, you've got to meet these standards because this is about can't taxpayers' money, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you think, no, you know, you're about taxpayers' money, kid. (laughs) You know, we pay it, and you're the one who are choosing what to spend it with, and you're not spending my money very wisely. I know, because they sp- the, the council spent a lot of money on letting areas go derelict, in demolition, in yeah. consultation, to, you know, before they demolish, etc., etc., and an awful lot of money is being spent. And the vast majority of the money that they spent keeping people down, knocking houses down, producing lots of little tiny patchwork quilt parks all over the city could have refurbished all the empty houses and probably built some new ones as well. I've seen, I've seen in, yeah. when I was walking in the streets of Tox at, at a certain point, um, there was not many people uh, outdoors, but here it was like packed. There was everybody was here in this area. Is this something? What, do you, which area do you mean? Here in Liverpool one. So everybody oh, yeah. comes here to shop. There's like everybody's on the street. And in Tox it was like pretty quiet. So There's no shops. There's no shops yeah. going shop. Yeah. They're building family houses, but no shops for families mm. to shop in. Mm. 
and we've been asking about this for years. Mm. I mean, every day, because I shop every day, I cook fresh every day, I'm sorry, that's the way I was brought up. So every day oh, I'd be going answer. to... Shut your face. <laughs> Don't have any stock here. Yeah. So, every, so every day I'd be getting the bus, and it'd be costing two pounds down to the shops and two pounds back. So whatever you were thinking you were saving from last day, you weren't saving because you'd already spent it before you'd gone. So we were saying, where's the shops for us? There's no shops. Have you grown any veg or anything, weren't you? Oh, well, madam, yeah. She's the cream <laughs> fingers. I can't mention the other place, can I, on this interview? This Why is not? to do with our streets. It's we all go, what's we happening. Go, we go in the streets it's well, what's happening in the area. No, we, we have a, a communi- community allotment um, up by St Bernard's Church on Kingsley Road, and it, it's under the name of Growing Granby. Um, and I happen to be a member of that. Um, You're but the my thing. <laughs> Can you not interrupt me, my dear? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. Uh, I've lost my tread now. I was on a roll then. You just go on, you go on, go on, me go now. On. You're not on, you know, one on. X Factor now and all that. You're part of a thing, go on. I've lost, I, I don't know where I was now. So you are doing an allotment we, um, by yourself. We got a, a three-year lease from uh, Liverpool Housing Trust because it was derelict land. And it used <laughs> to be uh, five Victorian houses, I think, sitting on that land. And they were all demolished. These were huge, big houses. And it was just like a barren place, just a dumping ground and waste. And the idea came that we could have a community allotment there. So we went through all the red tape and all the hassle and that to get a lease which we did do, which meant we couldn't go on to the site till the lease was signed, which was 12 months June gone. So that's over, you know, over a year of the lease gone. So we started off, uh, we had a digger in to dig up the um, foundations right down to the very bottom because uh, most of it's all compacted. She's going to tell you step by step what they most do. Of, no, most of it's all compacted by brick. It's still not finished yet, but the back is thriving quite well. We had sown uh, onions and potatoes, cabbages and uh, broccoli, which I wasn't very good with the broccoli because I think that the little uh, crawly things and the little flying things they had, they used to have banquets there, you know, in the night, you see, so they were all like lace curtains, the things, so. But we did get a good crop of um, potatoes from there and, onion. and the big onions from there and uh, some cabbages. So... Um, it's you sell, sell them on the market. So <coughs> it's not, yeah, we give some away as well to the yeah. community. So it's all been um, dug over now again um, because you have to put manure in now to, to, you know, before the frost comes, the beds and that. So they were all sectioned off. So everything's thriving at the back. We have um, got seedlings in which we have thinned out. Uh, we've got kale, we've got parsnips, uh, we've got, um, we've got well, loads of beetroot. And uh, what else have I got in there? Oh, Swedes. I call them turnips, but these are white, so they're not a turnip. A turnip to me is pink, <laughs> like. <laughs> no disrespect to do whoever said Swede. It's them white ones. So they're thriving quite well uh, with a bit of rain. That's very good. But uh, otherwise, hopefully, I should have a couple of crops of some form of vegetables to uh, give to the community again. We didn't plant any more potatoes this year because. Um, we just planted the potatoes uh, to sort of make the soil, which it did do. So, hopefully. We've got some veg in the street as well, haven't we? Yes, I have. I have seen a lovely big whopping courgette up there, <laughs> and I was I was eyeballing it. Yeah. It's a wonder it's still there. It? <laughs> I don't you know. Did. But also the children from Unity um, Unity uh, Club in Solway Street, uh, they go on the site now and then. They have planted up, um, what's it called, pumpkins. Oh, wow. So um, I have to keep an eye on them because there's a whopping big one up there and hopefully they'll be able to harvest them for whenever they have them, you know. Halloween, isn't it? <laughs> they are thriving. As you know, they spread all over the place. They need plenty of room. They were planted in the wrong place, but they're doing quite well. I've put straw underneath them to keep the little creepy crawlies away. Hopefully, there's no holes in them yet. Mm-hmm. And so in, in we will have. Street, they've got pears. You will, I didn't see any <laughs> pears on the tree. I think someone's nicked them all. Somebody nicked them all. Because I went, I went down. Yeah, we had 24. Oh, did, did you say someone take them? 
Because I had counted all... Sorry, I've gone off the track. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. no I had counted all them pairs, and now I just wonder if she hasn't played me for it. There was 23 pairs on that tree. Oh, there's none. Nice. Right. And I went down there the other day and I said, she must have picked all the pairs. There's not a pear on them. Raspberries, pears. Yeah. But I haven't seen raspberries. Oh, and I did eat a few raspberries. Or... I think Carol picked them for the pears. The pears, you think They're so? They're outside the house. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I hope she yeah. has. Yeah. They were rotten big ones. Mm. Oh, you had to take them, just take them down and let them go yellow. Yeah. It's yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, so hopefully we we'll have some veg from, from the community allotment, I hope. Yes. I shall persevere. Is it's it for long? Because then you, just when you've got the ground right, they'll take the contract off you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well, well, you see, the, the point is, it, you've got to be seen to be doing something on it because they could come any time for a spot check and they see there's not much going on in the front. All the action is in the back. And I like to be in the back. I don't like to be in the front. And all the action's in the back. And the ones who had the benefit of looking out of their windows is the people in them houses where that wall is. They can look out, and Father Pieces people can look out and see all these things growing. But as from the front, it, I despair of it, actually, to tell you the truth. I literally despair of it. It's a hazard. Definitely a hazard. You do need, actually, boots on there with toe caps on. <laughs> <laughs> but the back is thriving beautifully. And this rain has helped a lot because they're all standing to attention. <laughs> <laughs> but what I what I hear now, what, what, uh, I could be wrong, but is it a kind of um, um, a, a way of protest of what they're trying to do that you try to make the the neighbourhood more lively again? So that's the best thing you could do against uh, demolition to make sure that you see it's alive. Well, we lived in a sort of pariah neighbourhood that was just. You know, it's hard to describe how it was in our streets, to be honest, but it was utterly dire. Is that like 10 and years ago or longer? No, or well... 20 years? 20 years Starting ago. 20 years mm -hmm. ago, but, yeah. We were still like that up to about five years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we started doing something about it. Yeah. But it, it wasn't a protest at them. At them. It was... We wanted something better. And nothing was happening, so we had to make it happen ourselves. I mean, especially when you're coming home every day, you've been shopping or whatever, and you're walking with your head down because you just don't like what you see. So when we started doing things, you'd walk along and you'd be looking and you'd think, oh, such and such will go there, or, oh, that needs a touch up of paint there, or whatever. So you were walking along more hopeful about what you were coming back to. Before, you didn't want to come back because you knew what you were coming to. It was disgusting, it was horrible. Remember us at all them... Go and collect all them bricks, <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then having to uproot all our bulbs and everything when yeah. coming to do the houses. But I mean, you know, it was just it lifted you once we started doing things. It lifted the whole atmosphere, I think, mm -hmm. because you? people would get off the bus or stop yeah. before they needed to. So they could walk down the streets to see what we'd been doing. It's probably inspiring other people to yeah. do the same thing where they are, isn't it? it I mean, it just yeah. lightened people's... I don't, I don't think mine came out of nobility. I think I was furious. I was just so angry with how <laughs> we were being expected to live. And you, we must, I must have walked past it all at least ten years before I did anything because you don't you just do your house your bit in front of it and you don't bother so but I'm sure that's what drove me and still does actually yeah. <laughs> it just made me so angry yeah. really. yeah, the council were complaining when we were doing things they actually started telling us we can't paint the front of the windows that's what come wipe it off then because we're, we're carrying on remember that I day think when the police come up Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think if people realised what happened as each house was made empty, the way they were tinned up was appalling. So that it was like used bits of corrugated iron were first put up. You know, bits of it, it's almost as if the, that area, the Granby area, wasn't worth anything. It wasn't worth time. It wasn't worth expertise. It wasn't worth doing anything to a good ability there. So a place that had a negative mythology 
was just made worse and worse and worse. So nobody from the council actually came into their area because they already knew what it was like. So why would you go there? And that, that to me, is the attitude that came out of council, you know, the, the, the elected councillors, as well as the paid people within the housing, is that they know that area. They know that it, it, it's a scuzzy area and the people who live there aren't worth it and they probably don't want to live there anyway, anyways. So why would you, you do anything to raise that area? So they never came to see it because they already knew it. And so they could continue to build upon that myth of negativity. They and felt threatened when you were doing something yourselves, didn't they? Well, I don't know whether they felt threatened or not, and I don't really care what they felt, because they didn't feel what we were feeling, and they weren't living where we were living, and they weren't bringing their children up and dragging them past dirty streets with no street lamps, with boarded-up housing, and then saying the kids from around this area are a problem. Well, you know, you the, the way the council behaved... The, the people that they put in to look after to make the empty houses secure, you know, they, they, they just didn't care because we weren't worth caring about. And any child that's brought up living in filth and degradation is not going to value themselves. And that's how much value the council put on it. They talk about the world in, on, in one city. That's the big council thing, you know, Liverpool, the world in one city. So they put their dirty, great, insensitive, filthy hobnail boots all over the bit that is the world in one city, where you had 86 languages spoken in 550 houses. <laughs> you know, and that's the way they did it. So that's what Liverpool thinks. I mean, the thing is, the riots were caused by racism, by institutionalised racism from the police, from... You know, the, then they did the, 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 the loose and the shackles, you know, the report following the riots that said... The, the Granby Triangle was a place toxic with a safe place for people to live where people felt safe. So let's kick it down. And it's still the area where people feel safe. It's still the area that welcomes people. It's, we're not tolerant in toxic because who the hell wants to be tolerated? You know, you welcome people. And it still is the area where people feel welcome, where you've got a diverse community and population. You know, and what has happened has been done by people with money, people with power, by councillors, by elected members, by paid members, by developers, and I swear to God they all entered into deals. And Lovells is a swear word as far as I'm concerned because they are being... I don't hate them or anything because I, why waste myself? They're beneath that. You know, because it's all about their money. Sir, can, could I ask you something? Are you also from Liverpool? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you know about Toxted? Yeah, and where do you live now? I live in Highton. 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 Yeah. How is it like Highton? It, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, just, it's, it's a mixed area, Highton. So where I live, there's like, you know, sort of small se semi detached houses, but there's large uh, council estates as well. So it's a nice place to live. Where I live is near, it, like, there's You've a park. Been there for a long time? About 20 years. 20 years, that's a long time. You love sure. the place where you live? I wouldn't say I love it, but I like it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the difference for you? What, what would you make? Uh, what, what could happen that you would love it, or is it just? If there's a strong, I think if there's a stronger sense of community, I'd love it more. I think you just, it just, you just, just with people who live around you, you know, you get to know. But in a wider community, you you don't know. So I think in place you're talking about Toxteth, where I used to work, you, you get a, a stronger sense of community. Whereas where I live, it's just it, it more isolating, really. You know, and also I think in areas where you've kind of brought up as a kid and got to know people and know people around, it's, it, it, it's more insular where I live. I mean, I do like it, but I wouldn't actually say I love it. Because I think if you love somewhere, you, you just wouldn't want to leave. Whereas I'd be quite happy to leave, live somewhere else. But, um, but at the same time, I'd be happy to stay there. Yeah. If that understands the difference between yeah, love yeah, and yeah, like. Definitely. Is, is it something that's hard to do to, to uh, build a community um, as, uh, when you're working? I think, I, think, I think it is. And especially like a lot of places, like just like housing, it, it hasn't got a sense, that's not a sense of community. I think community is built o o over a long time. Mm -hmm. It's through people living there, going to school together, families living together. Whereas I think more and more, I think we're in an area now where, like society is sort of a bit more disbanded. You sort of, and also you can be much emptier. You, know, you can go home, you can watch your television, you can, 
you don't really maybe you talk to your, your neighbours, but that that's kind of a, about it. And also when you go shopping, where I used to live, there was like local shops where you'd go to, but they're dissipating now. You'd go there, but now you go to the supermarkets and places like that where you know you're out, you're travelling in your car and you don't see the same faces. I mean, I get involved with my local park where we have like a community centre, and so I know a few people. But it's quite hard to build a community. We'll have like open days where people people come in once, maybe maybe once or twice a year. But that's not enough to say it's like a community. A community is where you can walk around the streets and kind of know people and talk to them. I walk to them. If I see a neighbour, I'll chat to them. But apart from that, so I think a community is where people know one another and look out for one another. I think. Is, it, is, it, is it correct if I would describe my feeling that uh, a council is not really necessary to build a community, it's more the people itself who can build the community. I mean, perhaps they can uh, help you. Um, I think they can support it. Think it's not from, from the other way around. It's not like the council would say, oh, let's build a community over there. No, no, no. I think they, they, can, they can do things to support it by putting in community centres, putting in community space, you know, encouraging people to do community activity. I think also one of the things, an element of build community is the churches. But more and more, I, I'm not religious, but, but I know people who, who are religious, they have a more sense of community, I think, because they go to the local church, you know, and they know people who, who live in the area and support one another. So I think there are other, you know, there's a range of people can can help build, build a community. But I think more and more, I just, you, you kind of live in your own space, live in your own space with, with your family, you know, your immediate family. And, you still know yeah. I know my immediate neighbours, you know, but one's got a fence seven foot high, <laughs> so I can't chat to them. But another, another neighbour's, our, our, our fence is low, so if we go out and put the washing on the line, we can chat, you know, yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, and that's really nice. But more and more people just isolate themselves off, you know. They go in, they've got a seven foot high fence either side, and they're like a little rabbit box, so they, so they can't talk to the neighbours. Yeah. I'm just curious yeah. to know what he did, what you used to do when you worked in Liverpool Aid. I used to work in the libraries, yeah, as a librarian for a long time, that was my favourite place. As in Windsor Street and Lodge Lane. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, we did a lot of, we did a, I wouldn't say a lot of work, but we did a bit of work, working with the community and that was my favourite time of working in the libraries. You know, we put on events, you know, in the 80s, 90s, you know, with, with, with poets, you know, his, historians and, the, and what I really liked about there where I live if you put an event one person will come but in Toxteth you know you, you never get one person coming you'd always get a few people coming yeah. and that's like a big like a big difference. And you still yeah. work in library? No the, the sad thing was because, because the city councils had to make big cutbacks they got to lose a third of the budgets you know I got offered a uh, redundancy and a retirement deal which was like just too good to refuse so at 57, I've now left work. You now I was hoping to work till to 65, 66, but it's just. But in a way, it's quite exciting because I can do interesting things. Like I've just been volunteering for the biennial. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just coming down now and give me the expenses in. Yeah. So that's why I popped in here to see what was going on because I'm interested in the biennial. I heard about this, you know, doing the filming. So I yeah. thought, so I just come to have a little nosy. Were you involved in writing on the board? Not directly, not, not directly, but I, I, was in, I was interested in that project yeah. with Peter Wallace and Anne Cunningham and people like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. So I think libraries are quite important, you know, in the community. Yeah. They are, can, can help people coming in and so that's, that's really good. But of course they're getting squashed now, everything's getting squashed with the budgets and that. And I think the sad thing is a lot of people who've, who've built up experience, like myself, I don't want to be, you know, are leaving, you know, so it's like, so the thing's going to be, places, the city's going to struggle, you know, because a lot of people who've got a lot to give have left because of the, these deals that they've been given. So Sometimes it's quite, you hear from, from politicians that they say, well, we, we take our hands off and, and the people will do it by, by themselves. Do you think that's a good strategy? Like, we won't fund um, community things anymore, so the people will do it by themselves? Mm -hmm. Mitt Romney. Yeah, Mitt Romney has this idea. Uh, so we will not fund anymore. The people will take their own responsibility. Is that 
perhaps this is a perverted I mean, idea I, mean, I have now. I think it's totally hypocritical because we have bonded politicians for years and I think that they should continue to fund us. And it's all very well. I mean, because that's it. How much does the political system that we run in councils, local politics, and all the people who are employed to do that. And then you have national politics and all the people who are employed to do that. Then you have the European politicians and all the people who are employed to do that. We pay politicians oh yeah, a, a huge things. amount yeah. of money to tell yeah. us that we can't have anything. <laughs> yeah, to tell us that they've mismanaged the budget and we will have to pay them. And I think... I couldn't even tell you what I think about them because I tell you this much, I tell you there's not one person in this room that's mismanaged any tax money. Um, well, I bet there isn't. Well. Because we don't, <laughs> yeah, but the issue is because we don't get it. Right. Yes. <laughs> and that is the issue, is that we pay a third of our... And I work, most of the people, are, you know, because it's like, do you find that if you work, it's not a nice place to come home? So, you know, what do you mean if we work? We're gangs of working women, you know, we work, we raised our children and some of us no longer work because we're old enough not to and some of us are still working because, you know, that's what happens. Yeah. But the, and, and, the, and, I, and a third of your money goes to national <coughs> insurance and taxes and what have you to keep bloody politicians who then tell us that we can't have any money to keep our local library open and that the big society should be made by us. Well, they can go and shove themselves. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I understand. Yeah. Well, it's going to kill people. Yeah. It, it, it's very easy to say about the government, but basically the government yeah. employs local government offices yeah. you know, to, to, to develop things within the community. No, they don't. They pay local government offices to, to, to show us what they want to do. And if we don't agree, they'll do it again. They'll show us again in six months' time with a few mm, tweaks, right. but it'll still be what they want to do. You know, because if those people are employed to consult, then they're incredibly poor at it, and it's about time they were all sacked and they, they brought, you know, they, they spoke to us directly. Can I ask you, where are you living? You live in Liverpool? Uh, well, my family's on Merseyside. My dad was from Everton, and uh, they live in Birkenhead now. But interestingly, we found a street downtown in Birkenhead the other week where some, some people had tried to make a, a garden end. in their cul-de-sac. And there's been, they made a garden oh, in their right. cul-de-sac because yeah. before they'd be burnt out cars and all sorts yeah. of stuff. And the council had told them they've got to take it down. So there's been a huge campaign with people oh. saying... It looks, yeah. really, it looks really cars. brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> no, they planted it all at their own expense. No, you'll have to be in cars, but they'll come and move yeah. them, but they'll yeah. come and yeah. move yeah. flowers. Yeah. Exactly. Ridiculous. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. And, uh, well, back to what I was saying, is that they don't know how to spend people, our money. You know, there's people trying to improve where they live because everyone gives the North of Birkenhead a hard time. They, they make it really nice. There's people from all around going to visit to go, oh, look, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> they are. Yes. <laughs> just replace it, get yeah. the papers in, tell the papers what they're doing. And once it gets noticed in the papers, then the councillors start to back off a bit and tell everyone they, they were helping them from the beginning when they were not. What street is it? Oh, now it's. I can't remember the street. It's, it's near it's the. Right in the centre. It's near the fire station downtown. Yeah, in, in opposite the, the old fire station. There was, yeah. They showed you a photograph of what the people have done. Mm. A dirty ass. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we're, we're, we're photographers. Now. We've been. Um, Studying this area for 10, 12 years. Like the Welsh Street, Maybe Nina, in the Welsh Street Edge area, and all of that. seeing the coming and going of the Welsh Streets, which are a similar sort of story, aren't they? Well, um, we're across Princess Avenue. That's right. yeah. yeah. Oh, we've got to come and visit yeah. you and oh, see yeah. what you've done. Um, we'd love to. So, I mean, for our point of view, it's just really the history of, of this process is, is very interesting, and especially visually, because you can see it coming and going. and, and Mostly going at the moment. It's just shocking the amount of money they spend on turning places up when there's people who need places to live. Exactly. It's outrageous. It shows an absolute lack of imagination that they couldn't even let the houses be short let. So as the houses were emptied, the council were paying workmen to come in and rip them apart to take out anything that could possibly be useful. Um, you know, and yet we, we saw houses that that were taken apart, you know, that we knew had been refurbished 18 months, two years before, 
and then when the people left the own because what the council would say is we will offer you the market value for your house well bearing in mind that every action they'd done had depressed the market value to minus whatever you know then the market value wasn't very much if they offered a little bit more then people would take it because you have to if you're selling your house you you, you know if you've got to sell you've got to take the best price but also people so, couldn't get a mortgage because no. it was down as a an area with an uncertain future yeah. people couldn't get a mortgage to buy so the council stitched up the market really yeah. they were effectively yeah. the only buyer in town and they'd also rigged the market yeah, so, so they could pay a low price for it Mm. Well, can I can I uh, have a, a question? Um, I don't know what your name is. Clear. All right. Uh, have you followed a little bit the discussion here? Yeah. yeah? Um, you as, as you're pretty young. Um, are you still studying? No, I've graduated now. All right. What are your dreams for for later on? Where to live? Uh, do you want to own a house when you're in your, uh, you're older with your husband or? I would like to, yeah, own, yeah. own a house, but at the minute I rent, obviously, because I've just graduated, so I actually I actually rent in Toxteth, so um, just on Croxus Road, so I've been listening, and yeah. yeah. So where are you now? Toxteth. You're still in Toxteth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you have the idea to, to, to stay in Toxteth? Um, for the time being, kind of in, um, in I like the area, so, and it's, um, it's quite just reasonable rent prices and um, for now it's probably probably the flat that I'm in at the minute I'd like to rent and then stay there for a few years and then then buy a house probably that would be ideal I don't know whether that would be in Toxas I don't but I don't even know if that would be in Liverpool so and how would you buy a house when you frozen when they're frozen yeah well, I don't, I, I don't know how, how long that's going to be away. So, I just, um, I'm hopeful. Maybe I'm too hopeful, but I mean, I would eventually like to buy a house instead of. Okay, thank you very much. I think we have to uh, close the because it's six o'clock. So. Time has come.